Okay, what what I did was I put the uh, uh, magnetic reed switch transmitter uh, sensor in a little plastic housing so that I could balance it up and uh, make it stay in place for my test. And what I wanted to do is test the uh, open closure distance for different magnets. Um, so I started with a um, the magnet that came with the unit, and it's a nine, uh, six millimeter by nineteen millimeter uh, magnet, and it's um, neodymium, and it's probably grade N thirty five. And you can see with my sensor here, the poles are on either side, with the boundary between the north and south right in the center. So it's um, aligned actually with the cylinder. So that means that I want, since the field will be going around in this direction, I want the field to be parallel with the magnet. So this is the orientation I want. You can see that I have HF, FHEM running, FEM running, and right now the read switch is open. And as I move this closer, you can see where it closes, and then when I pull it back, where it opens. So you can see my first markings here. It's about two centimeters, um, uh, two centimeters distance, where the uh, the read, where the man has to be within two centimeters before we close. So what I did was I made a another unit, and this time I used uh, probably about uh, eight or ten, seven. I'm sorry, seven. Uh, disc magnets and they look like this these little disc magnets and I stacked them together to try to control the magnetic field and um, the tape just keeps them in place in the fo foil and acts as a little lubricant when it's in the bolt hole and so I just wanted to check and see so I'm closed there and you can see that it's a little bit stronger this one's about uh, three and a half centimeters before it. Um, let's do that again. Get it on the axis. Lock. And it's right around 2.9, maybe three centimeters where that actuates. So um, because of the shape of the molding, I had a, oh, I should uh, demonstrate that the, uh, the fields on this are axially um, aligned as well. So the um, field strength wasn't uh, strong enough to go through the moldings and the distance because of the distance of the molding that maybe placed the, uh, the sensor. So I got some even bigger magnets and you can see that again these are actually ma uh, magnetized. The magnetization direction is axial with the, the button magnets and these are 12 millimeters in diameter so uh, and there's 10 of these on this, so this is pretty strong. I left the spacers in that come with these magnets because they're incredibly powerful and uh, really hard to get apart. So I put the spacers on um, just for convenience. And you can see at this distance it's already closed. And then as I move away, so this one is somewhere around three and a half centimeters. So it's it's a pretty strong, pretty strong magnet. Now the composition of this is that uh, the foam here acts as a holder for the magnets and a spring. Uh, I put cut a hole in here and the um, uh, force the magnets through so that keeps the magnets in position. I found some weather stripping to increase the diameter so that and put some double stick tape here to keep the oops that's supposed to be metal in this pencil. Um, to keep the the uh, spring the, the foam centered in the um, in the um, bolt hole and the the tape keeps it from rotating so that the um, magnets stay oriented in the correct direction like this even though the uh, let's see we're closed so even though when we're springing. Um, it stays in place and it keeps gravity from twisting the bolts, I mean the magnets, from away from uh, vertical position. 
uh, the narrow size here uh, gives me room in the bolt hole to, to compress and to make this less springy I used a little screwdriver to poke holes in it to make it a little less springy to keep from pushing the bolt hole back or the bolt back. Okay so that's my initial tests on uh, the reed switch and the magnets to see uh, their control distance. What we have here is an internal door, basement door. I have a lock. The bolt goes through here, molding the inertion uh, magnetic reed switch sensor. I took a piece of plastic uh, connector tubing and cut it to make a, a, a little housing for the for this the sensor and it's double stick to the wall and then the sensor just slides into it just like this in and out like that makes it very easy to um, um, take in and out and test different configurations so I've got the FEM FHEM server running on Raspberry Pi upstairs on the second floor I'm on the first floor right now, so it's pretty far away. It has good uh, good sensitivity. And right now with the, the bolt open, the um, my magnetic sensor says the reed switch is open. So when I lock the door, the um, bolt pushes the magnets in place where the reed switch is engaged, and so it's closed. So now I have a, uh, a lock sensor here. We're going to so that that goes open. You can probably see the little LEDs flash. Lock it closed kind of a couple of times to show that it's pretty robust. So it goes open, closed, open, closed. Okay, what you see here is the uh, open door, the door bolt hole, the magnet assembly is in here, and then I've uh, place the uh, in ocean sensor in a little uh, housing I made uh, by cutting a piece of uh, um, connector tubing to the right length to hold it and then put double stick tape on it to stick it to the wall. I've got the center of the magnet um, in the center of the bolt hole uh, which would be in the center with the magnet so the reed switch is aligned vertically and um, it's aligned with the magnets, which are uh, 10 uh, small cylinder cylindrical magnets that I added until I get enough magnetic field strength so that the field's circulating like this, so that the fields will, would engage the, would be strong enough to engage the read, read relay. So what this insert does is it's, it's got the magnets at the front, it's on a piece of half inch weather stripping foam and I've got some thin flat weather stripping foam to ex expand the diameter here. What this does is it aligns the assembly in the bolt hole and the double stick tape keeps it from rotating because as you lock and unlock it the, the, mat, the weight of the magnets and the shape of the magnets tend to make it want it to ro rotate like that and that puts the fields in the wrong orientation. Um, so to keep it straight, I've increased the size at the end and put some double stick tape in it so that um, it stays oriented like this. The small diameter insulation, when it's compressed, when it's compressed, has a place to go inside the inside the hole. And then I've also um, tenderized it with a little screwdriver to reduce the um, the force that is required to to uh, compress it. So this just plugs in like this, and then when the bolt comes in, it presses the magnets back until they're close to this, and they pulls the switch closed. So it it should work with any door, any wood frame, uh, and then you can just stick on your magnet. One other point is this frame ends about here and so there's a gap that goes floor to ceiling and what would happen is the edge of this would catch inside and not spring back so I inserted a little I took a plastic bottle and inserted it in here so it has a nice thin, uh, deep cylinder that keeps this captured and keeps the 
edge of this material from getting caught inside.